Buongiorno. Hello, everyone. I would like to welcome you at our panel at ESOF 2020. The panel will be led by me and Tamara from Center for Dialogue in the University of Frankfurt. You might wonder where did the gold of 21st century come from? Graphene and what does it give us? How, it, how can it help us protect the environment even more effectively? Yes, you heard correct. Carbon, well, it's derivative can and will help us with protecting the environment. How does it work? What consequences for society and our culture will be brought by its usage in winter scale? Whole presentation will give you answer for these questions step by step. But before we begin, I would like to introduce Dr. Dominic Lutens from the Center of Dialogue at Campus Lidberg, whose initiative and drive allowed us to gather here today to this. Good morning, uh, everybody. Uh, welcome in our workshop. Uh, we are uh, very happy that uh, you joined us. Uh, I will give a short introduction about our organization, the Center for Dialogue at Campus Feedback, and also uh, will tell you a little bit more about our workshop. Uh, to summarize what we do as a center uh, in Frankfurt, uh, I have three words for you, uh, science, city, and uh, spirituality. Uh, science for us means uh, that we are closely related as a science communication center uh, to uh, the University uh, of Frankfurt, the Goethe University, and especially to the Natural Sciences uh, Campus. We are interested in cooperating with natural scientists uh, and uh, with scientists who have a heart uh, for society, for cooperating with uh, society. And that's why we are also here today uh, at uh, ESOF. We believe that interdisciplinary science and transdisciplinary science is the future uh, if we want to tackle the challenges that we face today in our world and in our environment. A second word for us, very important, is city. We are uh, at uh, the border of the city of Frankfurt, closely to the Taunus uh, Mountains, uh, and that gives us a very specific view how uh, nature and uh, city relate uh, to each other. Uh, we think about sustainability and ecology because we have this perspective. One view, from one window, we see the city, and from the other uh, window, we see the town uh, mountains. And the third word is for us spirituality, because we think uh, if we want to change uh, society for the better, we have to do self-reflection, uh, we have to do meditation, we have to uh, think about ourselves, think about uh, ourselves as a community of human beings, which are closely related uh, to our environment. And for that, we are also in dialogue with uh, different uh, religions and traditions because they are worldwide uh, very important. Uh, and luckily within different traditions, I think about the Orthodox Church, for example, uh, their uh, environment uh, is very important. Uh, when I um, uh, fund, we were funding uh, this uh, travel, and uh, today uh, you will uh, get to know uh, 10 students from four uh, different uh, universities and uh, from different uh, disciplines. And the topic uh, today uh, is uh, graphite and uh, graphene. And while I was walking around here in uh, Trieste, uh, I uh, noticed that uh, this is a city of James Joyce, the famous Irish writer, who was here uh, for uh, 15 years and starting his famous book, uh, Ulysses. And I was doing some research on him and I noticed that uh, uh, while he was preparing uh, his book, he, uh, this book, he had notebook and he used uh, colored pencils for colors uh, to make uh, notes to prepare this book. And of course, as you may know, uh, a pencil is made out of carbon. And uh, carbon uh, is the basic material for uh, graphite uh, and uh, graphene. Uh, so this uh, brings us all already close uh, to Trieste and to the topic uh, of uh, today. Um, 
we are going to talk about uh, graphite as pencil, uh, how it is used in artwork. Uh, so we have among us uh, human science uh, uh, colleagues and an artist uh, who will uh, discuss uh, graphite and the relation uh, to uh, graphene. Graphene is a very uh, important uh, material uh, when we think about uh, sustainability. Uh, maybe you uh, know the famous case of uh, Dupont, uh, who until the 60s were uh, producing Teflon, uh, and uh, uh, had, uh, which had uh, ecological um, damage uh, to the whole uh, environment. Uh, and uh, it had to do with the fact that uh, by producing Teflon, uh, they, uh, they uh, fast, this material, little particles uh, were uh, released, PFAS. Uh, and we will discuss uh, this toxic material today. And uh, graphene is, uh, is a very uh, good uh, material uh, for uh, businesses uh, who produce uh, Teflon uh, to be more uh, sustainable, to take up their social responsibility, their ecological uh, responsibility, uh, and also uh, their uh, economical uh, um, uh, responsibility. We will listen uh, to uh, engineers uh, who will uh, talk about uh, the use of uh, graphene uh, and how it uh, can help uh, to get rid of uh, the top toxic materials which are uh, produced, for example, when uh, businesses uh, produce uh, carbon. Uh, so our program is very layered. You will see an artist, uh, you will see uh, human scientists, uh, we will, uh, we have, uh, and we have engineers uh, among us. Uh, happy that you are all uh, joining us. Uh, and um, we now uh, can see an introduction uh, movie in which uh, the whole group of students will be uh, presented uh, to you. Hello, my name is Tamara Rexroth. I'm studying at the Goethe University Frankfurt, Physical Geography and Sociology. And I'm going for a campus tour with you guys. So, welcome to Goethe University at Frankfurt. This is one of the main campuses you can be at in Frankfurt. It's Campus West End. So this is one of the two places I spend my time studying. The rest of my study time I spend outside having field trips, for example, like... I love to be outside because nature is one of the most fantastic things you can look at. And we need to protect it. Right now I'm also doing an internship at the Center for Dialogue at Campus Riedberg and that's why I'm involved in this graphene project at the ESOF conference. My name is Hussein and this is Berlin. I love this city. I work. I work at the Cultural and Social Geography Department from Humboldt University and my office is right here. Yes, I study Human Geography at Humboldt University. I'm doing my Masters. I'm very passionate about the environment and sustainability and at the moment I am collecting data for my Masters thesis for my final project and I want to be able to to find spaces in the city that we can turn into green spaces. One example is uh, the tram tracks that you see behind me. We can turn this into green infrastructure. Very interesting. I'm very excited to have accepted the travel grant for ESOF 2020 because I believe that more now than ever before the interdisciplinary work is very important to improve the world, and only together can we tackle 
humanity's biggest challenges. Very happy and excited about it. Hi, my name is Lauren Ernst. I'm 21 years old and I study Catholic theology in Tübingen. Hegel, Schleiermacher, Hölderlin, Goethe, just a few names sent for the rich intellectual history of Tübingen, in which now exists a heterogenic group of 30,000 students, from conservative to left-winged and radically green, young minds battle to express themselves in this day and age. And why am I here? Well, I started at the Ebert Karls University in April 2018. What drew me into theology was this fascination of all this knowledge that is tied to it in all these different fields of the human experience. Language, philosophy, ancient to modern history, social sciences. The modern theologian has an unlimited toolbox of scientific methods to ask his questions in the world that he or she finds in front of him or her. In the spirit of the Second Vatican Council, the questions of the world are the questions of theology, hence why climate change and all the factors tied to it create ecological and socio-ethical and post-colonial theologies, just to name a few, that together with Pope Francis, who revived the great Franciscan spirituality of the 13th century on a big level, compose a strong perspective on this matter, that in dialogue with the other sciences, provides critical points of use from a unique perspective, drawn from the care for and understanding of, the choice and the hopes, the griefs and the anxieties of the men of this age, especially those who are poor or in any way afflicted, as the Council says. From this I draw my questions for this workshop, which I feel to be placed very well with the Center for Dialogue in Frankfurt. Why am I here? Well, basically to ask why all of us are here today. Why do we do what we do? What is it that we do? And what is it that we do it for? Hello, welcome at the University of Bielsko Biała. In this place, we are producing graphene oxide. We and my friends will show you all the steps of producing graphene oxide, thermal reduced graphite oxide, and also composite materials. Let's go! If you need something information about graphene, ask me. My name is Tomasz Kogulski, I'm a PhD student. My scientific interests are related to graphene, its production and also its application. I combined graphene with polymers to create composites, which you will see later. I'm also a scanning electron microscope operator. Those micrographs you will see at this workshop were taken by me. In my free time I play board games and read books. Hello, my name is Tobias. I'm a student of material engineering at the University of Bielsko Biała. Now I'm working with a graphing project where I can connect my two passions, science and growing plants. Hello, my name is Karolina and I'm 23 years old. I'm studying at the University of Bielsko Biała and I've got first degree of material engineering. I hope to get master degree soon. I'm working at university also. I'm the youngest worker in our graphing group, so I do mostly technical stuff. In my free time, I like to hiking, running. I also like to cooking and baking. Hello, my name is Grzegorz. If you can pronounce my name, call me Gregory. I'm a student at the Material Engineering at the sixth semester in the University of Bielsko Biała. Uh, I used to work more in the laboratory at the Graphene project. Uh, nowadays, I'm more uh, working on the student's body and uh, connecting the people from, from our project to the authorities at the university. My main interests are reading scientific books. Uh, as well as every other book like, uh, like sci-fi that has well-written scientific uh, background. 
Uh, otherwise, uh, I like to play StarCraft 2 because it, it requires fast thinking and uh, mainly quick decisions, which are very helpful uh, during, during studies. Hello, my name is Simon. I am studying Polish philology at University of Wieskobiała. I am part of this project as a person who translates scientific speech to any other person at university speech. My interests are European culture, philosophy, economy and black coffee. My name is Katarzyna Bemkukulska, but you can also call me Kasia or Katarina because I know my name is really hard to pronounce. I'm from Poland and I live in a small town called Cieszyn. I'm an artist, graphic designer and environmental activist. Um, I love practicing yoga, drawing and drinking and making coffee and reading and I really love plants. I'm basically trying to turn my little apartment into a living jungle. I really love nature and it inspires me, helps me to slow down and relax. That's why I'm trying to live in a sustainability way as much as I can to help planet. Welcome everyone. My name is Tamara. As Simon already said, I'm the second moderator of this workshop. And so it's a pleasure for me to introduce to you Lauren Ernst with a first introduction to our interdisciplinary workshop and some philosophical thoughts on the graphene theme. So, well, hello. I would like to start out with a question as Dominic already introduced you. Um, and I want to ask you, of you on something like this, like this, a pencil. Yeah, right. Um, why would I ask you that? Of course, everyone owns a pencil. But with the perspective that I'm taking right now, owning a pencil means you also own a portal, a portal to the past, the present, and the future even. You know, the pencil used to be on the very top of the list of scientific inventions when it was first made popular in the late 18th century. And it's so weird to think that something now so common was once even banned from export in England, for example, due to its strategic military importance. But here we are over 200 years later, and this carbon allotrope called graphite, which is what pencils are made of, has been the inspiration for naming another groundbreaking groundbreaking carbon-based discovery, graphene. What this graphene exactly is will be the task of our experts to explain. But I can say so much, it creates a lot of buzz. Some call it a super material, bearing huge potential for technology. And maybe it really is going to be integral for the development of the world that we live in. But well, I am not an engineer, I'm a theologian. Me and my colleagues from the humanities or liberal sciences, however you want to call it, um, we are not in the position to give you a in-depth lecture about what this graphene really is. Yet we are part of this workshop and I am here giving you this introduction right now. And I think this is very important. Um, we already talked about our interdisciplinary perspective um, and this is an interdisciplinary conference. Our group has been coordinated by um, Dominique Lutens um, from the Center for Dialogue in Frankfurt. Um, and the perspective the Center for Dialogue has is the perspective that all of the things we are talking about is basically built on. Um, and when he and I first talked about this certain topic, we started from the perspective of a poet. The poet John Berger writes on various occasions about graphite. I just talked to you about how this is linked to graphene, and this sparked a general perspective on this topic for me. Well, this is an excerpt from Museum of Desire, a short story by John Berger. Um, the eighth was a box of graphite sticks and pencils. Soft, medium, hard. Traces made by the soft graphite are black like thick hair and traces made by the hard 
I like hair turning gray. Graphite, as skins do, has its own oils. It is a very different substance from the burnt ash of charcoal. Its sheen when applied on paper, it's like the sheen on lips. With one of the graphite pencils she had written on a piece of paper, which she put in the box. On the last hour of the last day, one must remember this. Well, why does a poet write about something anyways? And in this case, graphite. I think it's rather simple, to be honest. He sees meaning in it. He articulates this meaning and he gives this object an existence outside of itself, which it would not have on its own. Of course, you can draw or write things with a pencil, but it's more important what you draw, what you write and what you create that makes this pencil an integral part of the process. The pencil and its graphite, it's a tool. Graphene, I would say, is a tool as well. We create it, we use it, and we give it its meaning through what we do with it. And whatever possible usage we might see in it, history has taught us a thing or two. Development for the sake of development is not the answer. And there is a certain Western utopia of a civilization permanently advancing with the right technology. And like I said, this is why we all are here. We from all our different fields of sciences come together to ask about certain questions we share. We care about the future and the environment. And we need new discoveries and ideas to fight against climate change and every other trouble this world is currently facing. Yet, once again, development for the sake of development, at least when solely measured in technological advancements, cannot be the way. And neither can an exclusively Western narrative. The Club of Rome, for example, founded in 1968, said it that there is a limit. And it's quite ironic that the usage of coal so important in the process of our history's advancement has also done so much damage from taking countless mine workers' lives to exploding climate change. Yet, once again, it is, in an abstract way at least, possibly part of our future. And with this climate crisis facing us, we look differently at the world and our history. To strive for a better future, we must take our history into account and acknowledge where we've done wrong. The Western narrative of advancement and globalization is nowadays being rewritten by post-colonial perspectives that make out imperialistic and colonialist ideologies that do not take into account suffering and injustice brought upon the world through our advancement. Who is it that we really think of a better future for? I would say we need to rethink and rethink thoroughly. With this possible super material, what could possibly be done with it? But I don't think it's just a question of what could be done. I think it's a question of what should be done. It is an environmental question, a social, political and ethical question at that. We as scientists, artists, poets, theologians, sociologists, we think, we create, we care and we share. And I invite you now to learn about caffeine, what it is and can be done with it, and to think, and most critically at that, if this is a chance for a better future, we need to ask our questions and search for answers. I think we can only enrich ourselves and each other with perspectives. And we need to think outside the box, outside our comfort zone. We as scientists have the power to give voice to the voiceless, the exploited and weak, the poor, the forgotten, or in this case, even nature itself. We heard about cultural impact of carbon, and before we start our technical part, our friend Hussein, who is a specialist with human and cultural geography at Humboldt University of Berlin, has a little quiz for you. Thank you very much, Simon. Yeah, so we thought that, you know, we wanted to make a little um, interactive part in our presentation, so I want you all to prepare your, your cell phones and your... Um, 
or your computers and yeah in a moment uh, we will see uh, the page you need to go to www.kahoot.com and yeah uh, exactly here so we need to go to kahoot k a h here um, up here www.kahoot.it and just take your phone or your your with your computer and we'll have a little quiz and yeah you can put in your name and we see some people are appearing already yeah and with this quiz quiz we will be able to better know our public and you'll get better get to know us and a little bit more about graphene okay we wait maybe a couple of more seconds so that everybody can log in okay and we can start thank you so much so welcome to SF 2020 quiz <laughs> so the first question is how many nations are represented in our Polish German graphene as of 2020 team Polish German Polish German French Spanish Polish German Mexican Lebanese French or Polish German Mexican Lebanese Belgium and we can go next very good a lot of people got it correct <laughs> so we have a lot of nationalities we can continue to the next um, question so Patrick is in place number one <laughs> well done we can continue uh, the second question how many universities are represented this was mentioned at the beginning of the presentation let's see if everyone gets it right okay yeah most people got it right well done <laughs> We can continue. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Jack is in place number one. Patrick is in place number two. We'll see what happens. Next question, please. Where do you not find carbon? In diamonds, in trees, in sweets, or in glass? Trick question. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Who gets it correctly? okay okay so everyone got it correct well done so we have some people well informed Jack is still in place one Patrick is in second place okay we can continue true or false have I heard of graphene before let's see <laughs> okay and most people have yeah well done <laughs> okay Jack still number place number one okay we can continue so what is the correct structure of graphene the chemical structure it's getting a little bit more technical <laughs> but I'm sure we'll do, we'll do great <laughs> Yeah. Okay, two more seconds. And correct, most people got it right. <laughs> okay. Nice. Okay, we can go to the next one. What is PFASS? A chemical of um, a group of chemicals with fluorine, structure of carbon, rate rare disease or short for baking powder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We still have four seconds. And let's see. Okay, most people got it correct. <laughs> it's okay if you don't. I also had difficulties. <laughs> so Jack is in place number one. Mm -hmm. What is um, Armstrong A? Length unit, name of a person who oxidized the graphene seed in Poland, or temperature unit? Let's see, two more seconds. And okay, very well. Yeah, most people got it right. Okay. So the third place goes to Patrick. Congratulations. <laughs> Second place goes to Alex. 
and first place to, to Jack. Congratulations. So thank you so much for participating. Now we have a little bit more idea, like who is in the public and you got to know us a little bit better. And yeah, I pass it on to, to Tamara. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Hussein. This was really a nice quiz, but I didn't hit the high score this time, so I'm really mad about you. Um, yes, everyone is awake now, and we can start the real presentation to start now. You're waiting for the Polish engineers group with their um, presentation about graphene. And um, it's called Graphene Meets Graphite Towards a Cleaner Environment. The presentation now We'll start with a short introductory film about the work in the laboratory, and after that, they will uh, tell us about um, a graphene based technology to clear water from environmental pollution often made by humans. Engineers, now the first use. <laughs> If you are still with us, it means that this topic keeps your attention. That's awesome. I think it's time for you to get some deeper knowledge about this mysterious material called graphene. Now, Tomasz and Tobias will give you the theory. They are specialists in that area, trust me. If during the presentation there occur some questions, there will be time to ask in Q&A at the end of the panel. Enjoy. Hello everyone. At this part of the workshop, I will tell you something about connection between graphite and graphene, and also about the history of this and the methods of producing graphene. 
My name is Tobias and I am a PhD student at the University of Bielsko Biała in Poland, where since 2010, we produce graphene and composite materials. In the second part of our presentation, my colleague Tomasz will tell you something about the treatment of the water from PFOA's chemicals, which are very toxic and harmful for human body. In case of this, we use graphene composite materials to remove this from water system. But first, we have to know something more details about graphene is built. Carbon is the most common element on Earth after silicon. It belongs to biogenic elements, like for example, hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur, and, and phosphorus. It's a building block of all living organisms like plants, animals, and also human. Until recently, because in the last century, only two varieties of carbon were known, and I mean graphite and diamond. The second half of 19th century gave us a lot of discoveries of other carbon structure, like fullerens, nanotubes, and also graphene, which is a single layer of atom carbon. Summarizing, when we are talking about graphite and graphene, we are talking about substances made of this same pure elemental carbon, but they have totally different structure. And it is related with other physical chemical properties. Uh, yes, we can say that graphene is a cold 2D material because its thickness, which is only one atom, is so much smaller than other dimension. So we can easily say that graphene structure has only two dimension. In effect of this, graphene has a very large specific surface area, which is going up to 2,600 cubic meter per one gram. Now you can imagine that one gram of this graphene has more or less the same surface area like two Olympic pools. But now we know more or less what graphene is and how familiar is with graph graphite. But we have to say something, mm, where does it came from? Graphene does not exist in nature. We can synthesize it in the laboratory. There are several methods of producing graphene, but the most common use is Hammer's method, which is based on chemical exfoliation, single, single graphene layer from the graphite. In this method, graphite is oxidized by using a lot of chemical substances like sulfuric acid, potassium permanganate, and hydrogen peroxide to get graphene oxide. But it's very important that graphene oxide is an intermediate product and requires thermal reduction process to get finally graphene. Before this thermal reduction process, graphene oxide must be purified, dried, and then chopped into small pieces. Then in high temperature and a protective atmosphere, reduction is proceed. In the effect, we get the single layer of atoms, which looks like super light and fluffy black powder, which you can see in the movie. Only now it can be used to produce composite materials like sorbents, foils, and etc. At this workshop, we want to focus on removing pollution, especially PFOS, from water. So in this case, we make research how to remove the substances by using graphene composite materials. Our university in Bielsko Biała in Poland is specialized in this kind of materials. Now I can give my voice to my colleague Tomek and he will talk, tell you something more about it. Thank you. Hello everyone. I'm Tomasz Kukulski, I'm a PhD student from the University of Bielsko Biała, and now I'm telling you something about uh, uses of ap application graphene and relate graphene-based materials to removing harmful substances from the water. The main uh, harmful substances which we uh, have in our environment are heavy metals like lead, chromium and mercury, or dyes, which we, you can uh, 
see in fabrics uh, and uh, in textiles and so on. But uh, on the other hand, we have uh, a large group of material substances, which is PFAS. What, what is PFAS? Uh, you can, uh, if you know Teflon and Goratex, it's it is PTF PTFE, that's a polymer. But if you chop in small uh, pieces, that will take a PFAS. So uh, PFAS is uh, are the family of more than four thousand uh, man-made chemicals which in their structure is fluorine. Carbon fluorine is the, uh, are one of the strongest ke chemical bonds in organic chemistry. But where we can find PFAS, it's the, uh, if uh, on their properties, PFAS uh, are uh, strongly persistent in our environment. It's most of them are easily transported by uh, transport but covering long, long distances away from the source of their release. And also PFAS are bioaccumulative. That means in uh, that it can accumulate in organic matters like fish, meat, eggs, all, and also in drinking water and dust. So uh, if you eat the, uh, them, we can also accumulate in our organism. This characteristic qualify PFAS to a group of persistent organic pollutants, also known as uh, forever chemicals. Nowadays, uh, a lot of scientific works devoted to the following issue. One of them report that, that we can find uh, PFAS everywhere also in uh, milk of, of human and also in glacial ices in Norway and so on. European Environmental Agency in their report shows that all following graphics that PFAS can be harmful for uh, also for human and uh, can affect on our thyroid, uh, increase cholesterol level, and our health, heart, liver, kidney, um, and also on our fatality. Report from 2019 from December, uh, that European Union, uh, Union said that uh, PFAS cause harm for ourselves and also should be managed as a group as a group, not that specific uh, specific uh, one substances, but as a group for more 4,000 uh, ke mermaid chemicals. Uh, that, uh, and also PFAS should be limited to the essential uses only. How we deal with it. so, uh, and next slide, uh, we see that uh, uh, report from 2019, which uh, European Union uh, called his strategy, and uh, where we, uh, for what we use PFAS, that uh, we use PFAS to firefighting foams, makeup, cosmetics, food packaging and non-coatings, non non-stick coatings and hydrophobic coatings. And now uh, I, can, I will tell you something about how we deal with uh, PFAS and also graphene, how it's related to our job. Uh, uh, me and my colleague uh, made experiment of removing PFAS from the water that the most common PFAS are PFOA and PFOS. Uh, in the 
left, we see that uh, concentration of PPOA decreased to uh, uh, decrease after 15 minutes when we uh, give it to the water uh, with our material. That is the same like you, uh, you see uh, on our movie when we put black powder to blue water and then decolor decolorized it. But PPOA also and PPOS uh, are invisible for us. Uh, this, is, this situation uh, re repeat with PPOS uh, as well as uh, pure graphene, graphene, reduced graphene oxide and uh, also our material. The concentration of this PFAS were measurement with HPLC MSMS. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, colleagues, for your presentation. Uh, for some of us uh, who are a more perspective, perspective, uh, or those with better internet connection might have uh, noticed different graphics in the background during different presentations. Uh, you might wonder what connects this graphics, graphene, and poetry. Wonder no more. Kasia, who is a creator and environmental activist, she is here to tell you all about it. Hello. Uh, as Simon said, I'm Katarzyna Bemkukulska, and I would like to tell you something about the graphics I made. So, uh, the series Environmental Thoughts consists of abstract artworks devoted to the topic on environmental issues. I used abstract forms to reflect the topics that have been bothering me for a, for a long time. I designed them by using pictures taken by an electron microscope and sparring brush strokes. Each of the artworks reflects a different problem that we face as a human beings. We have only answers to some of them. Uh, and during these workshops, graphene appears as one of the solution. Using forms of graphene and related compounds and its composites, I gave it a new meaning. At this point, uh, it becomes not only a physical, but also a mental or, or even spiritual medium leading to environmental awareness. I chose graphene because it's integral part of my life due to my husband, Tomasz, and electron microscope photos, which I used to make my artworks, was made by him. As you can see, the compositions of uh, all artworks is, uh, are full of harmony and even dy dynamic pieces are peaceful. Uh, the contrast between the topics discussed in the graphics and their harmonious uh, form is not an accident. I use the same mechanism that is characteristic for dreams, and this allows a viewer to get used to the topics um, I'm bringing up, which leads to the conversation instead of being scared away by the amount of negative emotions. Uh, they symbolically uh, present a vision of a world in which nature and man consist uh, in peace. Let me tell you shortly about the main thought of every graphic. Exhausted land. Expensive use of the land by men uh, leads to increasing barrenness of the soil. Cultivation of agricultural crops is becoming more and more difficult. It also impacts the food we eat. There are not much minerals and nutrition. Black energy pit. So far, an unresolved problem is the production of electricity, which is in most countries is obtained by burning coal. We are all looking for a renewable and also efficient source of energy. Trembling sea. Because of rising sea level, 
many, can many countries can be completely flooded in the future. For poor people, that will be the biggest issue because of lack of the money to move, they will lose a place to live. Natural fear. Fear of nature is one on, of, of the things genetically programmed in every human being DNA. The current situation in the world flips it, flips it entirely. Now we fear of nature and we hope it will survive. Temperature heist. Lowering the average world temperature is currently becoming one of the most important goals of the coming five to 10 years. If the goals fail, the consequences will be catastrophic. Melting chances. Melting glaciers are the phenomenon that we can observe for many years. However, through the appearance of Arctic ice, often mistakes for glacial ice, there are voices that the problem is a mystification. Airbreaker. Every year, air quality is getting worse. We can see it mostly in the big cities where on some days you can't even breathe out outside. Because of the climate change, we have also another problem, tornadoes. They begin to appear in the areas where they have not yet occurred or have appeared very rarely. Flame forest. Spontaneous forest fires are the topic that keeps going back to us. We have very dangerous fires at Australia and Siberia, which are beyond human control. This year, for example, in Poland, there was also a big fire of Białowieski primeval forest, which is on the UNESCO list. Uh, if you would like to know something more about my graphics, uh, you can go to the website, you can see in here, and there you can find the detailed description of all of them. Thank you, Kasia. As you said, there are several environmental problems we have to face at a global scale right now. And not only we have to face them, also the world has to face some problems we made. And maybe there are some, some of them that can be changed because of the chances the graphene technology gives us. We now want to start the Q&A part of this workshop and a few dear audience might have some questions. You can write them down in the chat. We like to answer them later. It's the privilege of being the moderator. I like to start that part with a question I asked myself hearing the presentations of Lauren and the Polish engineers. It's um, a question maybe some of you have too because um, in the beginning, we heard about the Club of Rome and nearly 50 years after the Club of Rome called out the limits to growth, we're now standing in the front of a maybe, we don't know, te technological revolution, and the chances of graphene. What do you think about the opportunity the chance, uh, the, to change the natural resource consumption patterns by using the graphene technology in some ways? Or in other words, how graphene may help us to overcome those limits to growth. Tamara, thank you for your question. Um, I'll try to answer your, your question. Uh, I think graphene is a very special substance. We can say the graphene is a nanomaterial with a lot of specific uh, physical chemical properties. Um, and exactly these properties we are using to preparing our composite materials. So um, I can say that uh, if we if we are enough responsible and uh, we we know enough about this nanomaterial, we can prepare very good composite materials to, for example, removing these chemicals from the water, like uh, my colleague Tomasz tell you about it before. Um, so I think there is a lot of very good properties and application for graphene materials. And uh, if you can think about it in a good way, we also can find um, 
very good application to save our planet. Thank you. Lauren said he wants to say something too, so I switched the screen to you. Well, um, yeah, it's basically something I brought up in my introduction as well. Um, seeing caffeine as a uh, plant um, lead to a lot of very positive things. I feel like um, what I would like to propose, make stronger, or maybe feel like has been um, evolving or come up in um, scientific thoughts in the last few years as well, in general, um, it's basically um, a paradigm shift in what we deem to be um, a society or the world's population advancing with um, wealth means what doing good as humanity means. Um, I think in the past, um, people were so um, fascinated by technological advancements that um, they put a lot of worth into that and did it you know, for its own sake. And out of that, a lot of bad has come. Um, we've got comfort with it. We've gotten um, the brightest variety of exotic foods, for example, all of these things we deem um, naturally nowadays, which are not, um, the perspective to me has changed, um, looking at nature and having the thinking of what, how does it um, deal with nature? What does it do with nature? Um, it's very in the forefront of our thinking nowadays. And I feel like that's very important. And there are also a lot of different questions I would have to caffeine. Um, for example, like uh, with all these possibilities there are for that, um, how do we basically um, deal with it? There are a lot of different economic um, things as well as uh, uh, tied to it, like for example, um, different companies who pay for these things, who use these things, who owns them, um, who cares for who. Um, I think these are um, things that Hi. Um, as you could see, uh, we had uh, uh, this interdisciplinary workshop uh, from different perspectives. Uh, we are interested uh, to get uh, some uh, questions uh, from uh, you, uh, the public. Uh, we are interested uh, what we can do as uh, engineers, what we can do as uh, social scientists, as artists, how can we uh, improve our uh, our worlds uh, using our own discipline and expertise. So if you uh, have any suggestions or questions, uh, we would like uh, to get into a conversation uh, with you. Uh, you can use uh, the chat uh, and um, we have um, a, a deck uh, and uh, then Simon uh, can uh, receive these questions uh, and we can uh, discuss them. Uh, Simon, I go to you. Uh, do you have received uh, some questions? If you unmute yourself, uh, we can uh, get into conversation. Questions. I have no questions on chat. Or... Uh, we cannot uh, hear you well. Uh, Simon, can you speak up a bit? Uh, uh, we, uh, I have no questions uh, on chat or another place uh okay can you um uh read out some questions that are in the chat uh there is no questions on the chat ah, okay so far no questions uh okay um so it means that we uh we had a very uh uh 
clear uh, workshop, uh, then I will uh, lead the conversation a little bit uh, and I would like to go to uh, Kasia. Uh, she, uh, as an artist, uh, is married uh, to an engineer uh, and uh, she has her, her own uh, perspective and she said at the beginning that she's also an environmental uh, activist. Uh, my question is, uh, does your husband uh, do uh, good work uh, working on uh, graphene? Uh, do you, uh, what do you think that the role of an engineer is uh, and uh, when you compare that uh, to the role of an artist in changing uh, society? Uh, okay, so at first I cannot say that I don't think my husband is doing a good job because um, I support him on uh, every level. Uh, and I think um, the one of the biggest thing, uh, which is um, like a similar in the uh, artist and science world is being creative and um, thinking about all of the moves. Uh, also, uh, I can um, I can like uh, uh, say that I think the engineer um, role right now is to f being uh, mindful because, for example, if we compare the situation of graphene and the plastic. Um, Graphene has also some disadvantages, but uh, I think the uh, biggest uh, like advantage in this is that uh, the engineers which are working uh, on the, uh, with this material uh, thinks about uh, how to recycle this and uh, how to uh, use this and also uh, think about the environment and um, how it's going to influence on the, our planet. Uh, thank you, uh, Kasia. Uh, I would like to go uh, to uh, uh, Tamara. Uh, you have, uh, uh, as an interdisciplinary scientist, uh, maybe also uh, some perspective on uh, graphene. You're a social, uh, uh, a physical uh, geograph and also sociologist. Um, what could be the importance of graphene and what do you think should we communicate uh, about it uh, to uh, the public? Uh, I'm interested in that as a, uh, as a head of a center for dialogue. Could this be a good topic for our center and why? Uh, how do you look at it? You're also working with um, environmental activists. Uh, so what do you think about it? Could this be a good starting point for conversation about environment, Tamara? Yeah, I think this may be a very good point to start for conversations about the environment with people. But I think we need to tell them more about graphene because I think most of people are hearing um, uh, this word first time in, in their life and they don't know what to expect from this technology. And there are so many ways you can use graphene. Uh, for example, you might use um, graphene to replace some semiconductors like um, silicone. And it may be possible to make some um, technologies like, you know, your smartphone <laughs> a little bit cheaper. And this may change consumption patterns too in the society. And so there are several ways we can use this, but we might, we might have to talk about it more. And I guess um, there is something Lauren wants to add to this uh, topic as well, uh, because he, in his introduction, said something about the mind of the people in the way they use technology. Uh, before we go to uh, you, Lauren, uh, we have a question from, uh, from the public. Uh, I would like to uh, read it out loud. Um, uh, will graphene uh, have any realistic application for the broad public in the near future, or will it remain uh, a toy uh, for uh, scientists? Uh, who would like to uh, answer it? Uh, Tobias? Yeah. Yes, we have this question. I think this is a very good question, and um, this is very important to answer correct, 
for this. Um, somebody is asking about the realistic application for the broad public in the future of graphene materials. Um, so I think exactly uh, the best example for this is um, the project we are doing right now at our university in Bielskowia in Poland. And it means that we are making a um, filament for 3D printer, which consists inside graphene. Uh, and the potential application is to uh, printing 3D material, which are very good electrical conductive and, and help and they can help a lot of uh, to the other engineers to creative uh, create um, 3D models and uh, yeah I think this is this is a very good uh, example from real life when we are using graphene materials not such as uh, not as a toy but it's a, a, a very useful tool for for working um, Tobias we were discussing in our conversations here in Trieste uh, that you also see uh, how uh, universities uh, should cooperate more with businesses. Uh, why is that uh, important for you and what role do you see for yourself as an engineer in that? Uh, I think um, if we were uh, working only by, um, by ourselves without uh, any background of uh, manufacturing or production, uh, we could not focus on the on the we could not focus on the very important point. So if you are collaborating with, uh, we, are, we are working with other people, for, exa for example, like from the um, business or industry, um, we can find out the, um, the most important point to, to do something more. And uh, that's point helping each other for us as a scientist and for a, uh, uh, people who are working in the industry to to working smart but not harder. Mm -hmm. uh, there is this uh, very famous case. I was mentioning it in the in the in the introduction uh, of Dupont, uh, who were uh, producing uh, Teflon. Um, your uh, colleague uh, Tomek uh, was bringing it in that uh, uh, what uh, could have helped uh, his experiments and uh, his expertise, what could DuPont learn from what you do in uh, Bielska Biała? How could they change uh, the way uh, that they uh, were producing uh, this Teflon? Um, maybe um, I can say some, some, uh, some things and introduce, because um, we have to change our mind thinking, because um, if, we, if, we, if we find the material, which is graphene material composites, which we are using to uh, removing this pollution substance from the water. Um, it's, on, it, it's, a, it's a very, very good way to, to use it, but it's not the solution to the problem because we have to think at the beginning uh, of the producing everything. So we must to focus on the uh, very beginning step in the production uh, everything materials. Is it good for us enough and is it good for environment? But um, yeah, we as a scientist, we can find the solution to, to resolve this problem. But uh, it would be better if uh, this problem will not exist anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this brings you close to uh, Hussein, who uh, asked the question. Uh, and then also I would like to go to Lauren again, uh, because um, it's not about uh, only solving a problem that is created by humankind, it is also thinking in a new way uh, about what to product uh, and uh, why. Uh, and then an uh, engineer uh, has a uh, role to play in it. Uh, Hussein, uh, you asked a question uh, from the perspective of a human geographer. Uh, what is uh, the main is interesting point uh, uh, to you in the, in the graphene uh, topic? I got this here on my uh, chat. I'm not sure if you asked this question, but uh, Hussein, what was interesting for you to uh, to deal with this uh, topic uh, in the preparation of our workshop? What what uh, did you think was interesting about it? Yeah, um, well, I, I was thinking a lot about the 
like just the group being interdisciplinary and coming together and finding common grounds. Um, I think that was really, really good. Also, uh, being able to 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 you know to encourage um, a male uh, and as well as a female moderator to participate and and include more representation representation in science, um, also for minorities. Um, for me, yeah, that was basically very, very interesting. Also thinking about like the production of science, how can we, um, we like, how can we create spaces in science for more minorities or people from the global south to come and, and explore, um, you know, how this material can be used more wi widely and not us coming as Europeans de delivering a, a like a, um, um, you know, a, a ready product, but like finding ways to develop it together, you know, and as you said, like finding more interconnection between the industry and science and, but not only, um, but also with uh, the global south, how to connect more um, these spaces. Yeah. But I really, really enjoyed working together with everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that answers the question. Uh, yes, of course. Thank you. I go back to you, uh, Simon, uh, as a moderator and to you, Tamara. Uh, you have uh, the floor uh, and uh, you can uh, lead uh, the conversation further. And at the end of our uh, Q&A, uh, I, I would like to address uh, at the end the public again. So uh, the floor is yours, uh, Simon and Tamara. Thank you, Dominique. So uh, in the beginning, I wanted to um, ask Lauren what he says to the question I mentioned. Maybe we can do this now. Yeah, I would like, really like to get back into the discussion because there are a lot of things that came up right now um, that I feel like I would have a lot of um, to say to. Um, I love um, Hussein's um, perspective, um, the question of how science uh, um, to be creating science. I think that's really interesting. Um, I feel like in this day and age, um, I think the biggest thing we need to discuss when describing the reality, the world we live in, is plurality. Um, the plurality of perspectives, of personal realities. Um, and this makes interdisciplinary science ever so important um, because we really want to get a grip of what the human experience in the 21st century is like um, in order to be able to do that and to pass this to the human needs of the 21st century. Um, I feel like we need to take on all of those different perspectives and really um, bring them into a um, general forum and have them clash and have them fight through sometimes and sometimes have them uh, inspire each other and do something to each other. Um, and I feel like um, why I wanted to bring that up with the um, of Rome, for example, as well, is because in the second half of the 20th century, um, there's been there has been the start of the process in which we are now, um, which um, starts to see the world differently, starts to take other um, matters more important than maybe others before, um, and in this, I think these times are very fast changing times and very challenging times. Um, there was so much happening at once that a lot of people can't even uh, comprehend that. Um, and in order as scientists to um, really figure out what's going on here in this crazy day and age, um, we need as many perspectives, as many people really caring for this or that and talk about it with each other. And to me, this has been um, um, a nice... Um, a nice experience to understand that I feel like this is um, really the right way to go into the future. Um, that all of these future questions we are talking about are kind of really present questions. It's about these things we face right now here and there and looking back at our history. This to me um, also represents how we can manage to achieve a view of the future 
how we want to perceive it, how we want to pursue it, um, that us our reality justice by looking at the history, how we've come to where we are right now and what this now that we live in exactly is. And from that understanding, um, create a vision in the end that um, leads us in the presence to where we want to go. And I feel like um, this dialogue we have right here is a great example for that. Yeah, in the beginning of the work with this group, um, we, the social science um, people, Hussein, Lauren, me and Kasha, also mentioned that um, we wondered about how graphene as a micro and nanoparticle might be harmful to the environment. Um, for example, like plastic was, because it was um, invented nearly 60 years ago. And now we see there are several problems um, that are um, resulted by this technology. So uh, we made some thoughts on that, on, uh, that um, theme. And I think Kasha <laughs> says something to, to this because it was really interesting what she has to say about this. Uh, okay, so as I started to say uh, before, uh, I think uh, that's uh, a really precious thing to uh, think about the graphing uh, and working with it, uh, with like a caring for a planet, what is going to be with, uh, with this material later. Uh, because the situation with plastic was... Uh, was so hard because um, people who uh, like created it uh, didn't thought about this uh, about this thing, and we started to think about the plastic as a problem, as uh, uh, what to do with it. Uh, when we um, we stand uh, as when we saw that this is a really big issue right now because we have this uh, sort of uh, plastic and we don't know what to do with it. And uh, the graphing has this uh, advantage that uh, scientists and engineers uh, who are using it, thinking about the planet and uh, what to, uh, how to use it uh, in a way that can be good for planet and be recycled and all of this stuff. Um, is it uh, true, I go to the engineers, uh, that uh, graphene in the long run uh, is hard to deal with? Is it, uh, can it be uh, toxic uh, in the long run if, uh, if it is not recycled? And uh, what are your thoughts about it? Uh, how do you reflect on it and um, uh, use your skills to, to deal with that question that uh, Kasha brought up. If we take uh, graphene as uh, nanoparticles, that can be harmful for us and uh, maybe it couldn't be uh, used as, uh, uh, use it as common style. But if uh, we take uh, nan nanoparticles and then aggregate to a bigger one, and then we put it in together like a filter or in some material, which the, it can be uh, transported from them, then we can use it as a uh, for example, lead, mercury, but we know that it could be harmful, but we, uh, we have to learn how to deal with it and how to use it for, uh, for people uh, and it could be useful for them. How to recycle it? I think that uh, so in some application, uh, it could be recycled, but if, on the other hand, uh, graphite, graphene, uh, it's also only carbon. 
that uh, maybe in next generation of bacteria, uh, it can eat them and reuse it for its properties. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, um, uh, to share this with the public, this was like a basic question that we uh, as social scientists had. I'm myself also a social scientist. Uh, and uh, so, it, it, is, um, it was a, a good help for us uh, to uh, realize that it has uh, not as uh, toxic uh, qualities as plastic uh, has, uh, but because it is a, a material with such a big surface, uh, it really can uh, be a sorbent and uh, so that we can uh, get rid uh, of uh, toxic uh, elements. Um, I can see that uh, 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 the time is uh, almost uh, done. We don't uh, have to uh, uh, go all the way the last uh, eight minutes. I go uh, last time to uh, the uh, moderators, Simon and Tamara, if they had uh, some uh, questions. Uh, received and if not, uh, I would like uh, to wrap up uh, uh, the workshop. So Tamara and uh, Simon, did you receive some uh, other questions? No, uh, no I, have, I have no questions. No. Okay. Um, thank you uh, all, uh, dear public, uh, for uh, being uh, in our uh, workshop. Uh, it has been an honor for us uh, to be here at uh, ESOF. Uh, because of uh, Corona, we are uh, with a smaller uh, uh, group, uh, but it was uh, really experiencing the ace of experience uh, in, in that way that all the workshops here are somehow hybrid or uh, online. Uh, and uh, uh, we as young scholars uh, and uh, uh, activists, it has been a, a pleasure to be here at ACE of an interdisciplinary and uh, a transdisciplinary forum where we could uh, meet uh, journalists uh, yesterday, where we will have uh, the possibility also to meet the director of Euroscience, who was with us uh, today. Um, it has been a pleasure for the Center for Dialogue uh, to start with such a workshop. It was a, a bottom-up approach. It was up to the students uh, to, uh, to uh, select uh, the topic of uh, graphene. I also talked uh, about it with a, a colleague uh, uh, of mine, uh, Peter Noss, uh, who is uh, also uh, a theologian and a social scientist and who is also with us uh, today in uh, Frankfurt. Uh, and uh, he, he said that um, it's, it's important that uh, for next generations of scholars and, uh, and scientists that they could, uh, can meet uh, together, that uh, they can understand each other better in an international context and in interdisciplinary context. And the idea of ASOF was uh, to bring um, uh, scholars from uh, Eastern and Western uh, Europe together. And you can see also in our uh, email addresses uh, that we uh, come from different places, uh, like uh, from Bielska Biała, from Berlin, uh, from Tübingen uh, and from Frankfurt. Uh, I thank you, uh, thank you all, uh, dear group, uh, for preparing this workshop. I thank you, uh, public, uh, for uh, being with us. And uh, I invite you to enjoy uh, the rest of uh, Azov. Uh, so goodbye, uh, take care, uh, and uh, we'll see each other again, maybe. <laughs>